Right then, Tom, first net back, what are you looking to do? Um, well, I've not had a hit since last, last season, actually, so first net of the season. For me, this is really going to be about batting as if it's March, February. Um, watching the ball, trying to play within my area, my zone, uh, making, taking note of head and hands working together. Not trying to be too expansive, I think, something that I often see with a lot of lads that we coach is that they try and um, get back into winning nets or pre-season by just going and trying to smash it. Um, so for me, I'll look to back time here, and if I can occupy the crease, I know that batting will get easier. And allow me, if I can take some confidence from today's net into my next next session, I'll be, be more ready to go once the game starts. So, simple as that. So what we've got here, mate, is we've got our bowling machine set up like a new ball bowler. Yep. Okay. Right arm over the wicket, which is me taking it away from you. Yeah, pretty pretty standard, yeah, pretty standard challenge to expect really early on. Oh, played. Right, what are your thoughts so far? For me, footwork is, is secondary for me to my sort of head position getting into the ball. If I get my top half of my body in, I'll be okay. Uh, played it all right. Try to keep heading hands in line. Um, it's got a little bit of natural variation. I'm yeah, just trying to play it late if I can. Trying to play it under my eyes. I'm pretty happy with... Um, it's consistent. If I'm playing well, I'll consistently defend it back towards the bowler. So if I'm hitting mid off like that or mid on, I'm pretty happy. Um, not opening the face too much, but yeah, not not read not read a lot into it really after my first sort of six mm. or seven mm. of the season. Just I've, I've hit five out of seven in the middle, so I'm pretty happy. Cool. Carry on. Yep. Yeah. I think that's where a lot of lads that we coach over two don't overanalyze that ball. Mm. That's one of the best balls you can bowl as a bowler. It's pretty full. Middle stump like that early on. I've got to have, you know, either decent footwork or really good hands and head. So for me, I know I've got decent hands and head, not always footwork there, but I focus on that rather than getting too hung up that footwork. And I'm at least in a still position then. Yeah? Mm. Just thought I'd give you a scoring ball. You got obviously more confident, a little bit more positive as well. Yep. Um, what would you say your your best options are then for scoring? Uh, for me, though, I just wait. I, I like the ball being in, in my, as I said, my area. So I'm pretty happy just to let it come and hit the bat here. Um, I, I've obviously hit down through mid on over the top, which is a shot I'll play early on if I get it straight enough. Um, not a big, huge cover driver, so it's nice to. I think with that in mind, I'll always practice cover driving by holding my shape because. I know in a game I have the tendency to collapse when I play it, so I know that in practice if I hold the shape I'm likely to hold that back path for longer in a game, does that make sense? So often I'll, it'll almost appear like I've dragged it through there in a game, but I know what I'm doing because I'm picking the ball to hit. Um, I think by practicing the check it gives me more control and more confidence going into that. Mm. Um, not a lot really, just as I said, just trying to be watchful. Not overanalyzing it when my feet aren't in the greatest position, but that's something I've just, as a club cricketer now, I've come to accept, and I just try and work with that and work with my strengths. And yeah, mm. I think there's going to be a lot of guys that go back, and it's going to be mid June, mid July, isn't it, for their first hit as a squad, facing a bowler or no, not in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and they're going to be um, expecting to be batting like they would in mid mid July in the normal season, and it ain't going to be that, is it? We're fortunate this is a flat wicket, but got no excuse, have you? But as soon as you get on grass, it's doing a bit. So yeah, um, what do you reckon? I think you played it pretty well, to be honest, Matt. I think you um, you waited for the balls that are in your area to score off. 
put the bowler off his length, obviously, because after you put one over the top, I had to take the length back a little bit. And if you think, you know, not, not every bowler is going to have the control that the machine does. So dragging that ball back could create another scoring opportunity. But I think it's, uh, I think you've done well to score off the balls that you were looking to do so and not go sort of looking for anything that wasn't there. So my only option really would be here would be, I think the question I'd ask in here is, is the keeper up or not? Because as I'm getting more confident, obviously my first net back, but again, part of my, my shots would be that if the keeper's back, I'd look to come at the bowler. Um, especially that can work in your favour when a bowler's got more control. It's easier to do because you know roughly where the ball's going to be. Mm. Um, as opposed to someone that's spraying it everywhere. So it, I guess that's a good shot to have against a bowler that lands a lot in the same sort of areas. That because you know roughly where it's going to be, I've often had success with using my feet against Seamus with the keeper back because it's a low risk shot. And a very good way of getting your weight into the ball early on in, in your innings. Right, different challenges then with the ball moving into you. Waiting for the ball longer, I think. I think that's where, when you're out of practice, your feet, your head, your hands working together in it as one really shows. I think you get away with it outside, off stump, off stump, outside, if you've got good hands and good head. But there, Christ, you have to be, you commit too early at that pace with that swinging in. If I, if I, if I commit and go early or, or plant, no chance. If you're slightly heavy footed, like I probably am there, no, so I think I um, found myself saying to myself, wait a lot more, move later, but that needs some practice, I think. Mm. Well, it's hard work, isn't it? And sometimes, like you say, hitting through mid on actually gets you in a really good shape and forces you to wait for the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, getting those getting those few through there very straight is going to give you quite a bit of confidence, especially going into this next bit. So you've had your practice. We're going to imagine now it's first first game of the season. Brand new Duke's ball. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come left arm over the side arm, generally try and swing the ball back into you, okay? But my my job is going to be to get you caught behind, yeah? I'd have, a wedding, I'd have a wedding to attend this weekend. <laughs> Green seamer. <laughs> April the 26th. Right, you've got three overs. Right, right you ready? That is. Thanks, sir. <laughs> What's the field? Two slips, yeah. gully, point, cover, mid off, wide mid on, square leg, fine leg. Yeah? Blake. One run. Oh, I reckon that's gone between. <laughs> Probably not Garrett. Four. Wide ball, feel free to come. Play. Play. Again. Couple of runs. Yeah. Oh, that is an absolute seed. Oh. Oh. <laughs> right. Tell us then. Easy, hard, why? Uh, tough. Tough that. Um, yeah. Swinging it back in, a bit of bounce, so you're hitting what, what you call splice the bat, so it's a hard length, the bowler's bowling there. 
By hard length, I don't mean a difficult length to face, I mean a hard length that the bowl is hitting. So it's hitting the near the sticker of the bat, um, which makes it makes anything any forceful shot really difficult to play because it's just an extra bit of bounce. I think for me again though it's that mindset of whilst on the machine you might be aware of playing later, where your feet are going or what you're trying to do. I think there the focus just has to be on watching the ball. And I think I've got in a couple of interesting very front on positions to you but actually at least kept my head and hands in line and played soft hands. So um, yeah I mean the reality is a bowler is they're gonna move the ball, they're gonna is that human element they're going to work you over take the odd one across bring the odd one back and you've just got to scrap quite hard there and batters opening bowlers are there to get you out and bat, opening batters have got to try and find a method or a way so i guess um, that is the the slight different challenge you get you know when you've been working on the bowling machine you can get into a bit of a rhythm can't you even if the pace and the length have gradually changed here and there to make it a bit more difficult you've still got that rhythm of the same thing happening over and over again whereas with a bowler you got to watch that ball real hard. It's not going to be coming out at the same pace. I might try and do something a little bit different. Um, and I do think that's where, especially when you're working on new ball skills or trying to relate something to a game scenario, the sidearm's just really, really good bit of kit, especially just that human element, like you said. And I'm quite happy to sit back in my crease as well. So I think that with that in mind, you have to accept if, you, if you're an only batter who maybe doesn't get huge stride forward, um, you have to bear in mind that occasionally if you do sit back, you will nick a few more because you're sitting back. Providing you do it with soft hands, I'll take that. But my idea of sitting back is that it allows me a bit more time and a bit more length to, to adjust or to play with. Um, being slightly stronger when it is just short of a length in here or in here. That's probably, I feel stronger certainly opening the batting. I feel more comfortable with someone bowling length or back of a length. Um, with my sort of game than I do maybe if they're going really full. Which actually in the psyche of an opening bowler is often they want to hurt you and they want to bowl short and fast and quick. So maybe for some opening bowlers out there early on to batters, if you could do swing it like Ben was doing there, if you can go fuller and you're in the game. Because your feet have to be spot on. If you're, you know, the fuller it is, the less time you have to move. It's a fact. If I've got less time to react, I've got less time to get it right. So that's interesting. But okay. you obviously noticed it was swinging, so mm. you kept a lot of them full. Um, you probably could have gone full. That's my only feedback for a bowl. If that was a bowler in a yeah. net that had bowled at me, I'd have said, um, how many balls where, yes, I might have nicked them, but all I've done is just play the line of the ball. I've still kept my head and hands in line. What I'd say is, is that with it swinging as it was, could you have afforded to get the ball outside my eye line? So I, I was unsure, you know, so I'd be forced into playing balls I wasn't comfortable with. So that would be my feedback for a bowler there would be, Potentially a bit, bit overexcited, a bit too greedy in the line, a bit too straight. Um, yeah. Cool. Enjoy that. That was good.